in this video, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about, I guess, what a unit test looks like in Ionic and why we might want to uh, create a unit test. Uh, I've done some uh, tutorials and videos and things like that in the past where I've I've gone through setting up unit testing and end-to-end -end testing, um, how to go about uh, writing the tests, and I've also done a bit of an introduction video uh, into, I guess, some easy ways to get that um, set up and get started. Uh, but I think uh, when learning about testing uh, initially, it can be a bit confusing. Uh, you don't really see, I guess, the uh, the relevance of it, like how it works, what, what am I supposed to test, uh, what is the benefit of that. Uh, and I remember when I first started learning this stuff, I kind of thought, well, you know, what, what do I even test? Do I just pick some random things and then write a little test for that? And I couldn't really see the benefit in that because I thought, well, okay, great. So I know this one little thing works. Um, how is that really going to help me? So I guess the point of this video is to kind of show you in a, in a real world scenario, this is a, a sort of real app that I'm working on uh, using test driven development. Uh, so I wanted to show you what the unit tests that I'm creating in here look like and why you know, they're going to be useful uh, to ensuring that this application works well and ensures a certain level of, I guess, code quality. So I'm not going to uh, go through testing setup or even really how to use the test. I really want to just um, look at, at this from a, a really high level and just show you a few tests, show you what they're doing and hopefully try to communicate why that might be useful. And so all this stuff you see on screen now, this is a lot of just setup for the, the test here. So all this stuff at the top is just setting up the test environment. Uh, it's getting everything ready. Uh, again, this is stuff I've covered and it's, it's not what I want to focus on in this video. Uh, what I am interested in is the, the, test, uh, the unit tests themselves, where, which you're looking at here. Uh, so on the screen now, you see each one of these it uh, statements here defines a test and then that's um, testing something. And so the whole concept of a unit test is that you're testing these singular units of code, these small little chunks of code that basically do just one thing. You're testing one thing and you're testing that it works. Now, what exactly constitutes a unit test may be up for a bit of debate, I guess, uh, if you're taking a really sort of purist uh, view of it. Um, a unit test really is testing at a really granular level. Uh, you may be testing just, you know, that a an element when passed into a function gets added to an array. Um, I guess I'm taking a little bit more I guess, liberty with testing here. I'm testing more broadly, perhaps with a more, I guess, behavior-driven development type approach. Uh, but I think this is going to um, help communicate the, the concept reasonably well. And without wanting to get you know, derailed too much, I think that it's probably an important thing to keep in mind that you know, there is all this material out there for how to unit test and I think the best advice I could probably give is to, you know, try and do things the way that, you know, you're supposed to, but don't let that, you know, paralyze you. Don't let it stop you from creating these tests. Uh, if you're testing something wrong, uh, go with it. You'll get better at it. It's kind of like learning to develop in general. Uh, your tests in the beginning will be bad, probably. Um, but as you write more tests, you get a better feeling for it and you know how to write better tests. Okay, so now let's actually look at what I'm doing with these uh, tests here. So uh, I think I mentioned before that I was using test-driven development to uh, create this application. And again, I've, I've written some stuff on this if you want to go read that in a more in-depth uh, level. Uh, but basically, the idea of a test-driven development is that your tests drive your development. So you write the test before you write any code. Now, you don't have to do it that way. I think it's a particularly good way to do it, uh, but you don't have to do that. So if we take a look at you know, the tests I've got here, um, the first one, which is um, something that's actually just built into this uh, unit testing template by default and is generally there in most tests, uh, especially in Ionic, the first test just tests that the component is created. So that's obviously a very basic test, uh, important also. Uh, so all we have here is just an expect statement, and that just says, well, this is what uh, we expect to happen. We expect that the component is an instance of add notice page and then if that's true, the test will pass. If it's not, it will fail. And the next test I have here is uh, similarly simple. I'm testing that the component has a class member called title. And again, I have that expect statement. I check that uh, title exists on the component. And then if it does exist, this test will pass. And so what I would have done originally here is I wrote this test without that title being added to this component yet. You can see right there, there's the class member. So this is going to pass. But originally, since I'm using test-driven development, I would have wrote this test when that wasn't defined yet. 
I'd run this test, it would fail, then I'd go and put that class member in there, run the test again, and it should pass. And so to run the test as I'm developing, I'd run in my um, uh, in my command line here, I'd run npm test, and that's going to run all of my unit tests for me. And so I'm just going to let this compile and run here, but um, unless something has changed, I'd, all these tests should pass. Um, last night they were working at least. And so since you know all my unit tests are passing, as I'm working on this code, uh, if I'm making changes to things, uh, I could inadvertently uh, break things. You know, the technical term for that happening is you know, uh, they're regressions. They're uh, as you're, you're adding new features, you're breaking old features. And so you might be working on something totally different and not even realize that you're breaking something that was previously working. And now without unit tests, you may not find about, out about that for ages. With unit tests, you'll see right away, something will pop up and say, uh, well, one of your tests has failed and here's why. So right now you can see that you know, all the tests are working. Our component does have a title class member. Uh, but let's say I was, you know, I was working on this, I was changing some of these uh, class members around and then somehow I accidentally deleted that. That's gone missing or maybe I renamed it or something like that. So if I save this now, our unit tests are going to run again and now that test that I had that checked to see if the uh, title class member was defined, that's going to be undefined now and the test is going to fail. Okay, so you can see there it says uh, executed 35 of 35, one failed. So if I scroll up now until I find some red text and some errors, you can see here the one that failed was add notice page should have a title class member. And it says uh, the reason under here is that it expected undefined to be defined. So it's accessing uh, component.title and it's saying we want that to be defined. Uh, it's not, so the unit test fails. So I can just add that back in there, save it, and that's going to sort that test out. So that's obviously a very basic unit test, um, but we can get you know, a lot more complicated. And again, I'm not going to get too far in depth into creating more advanced unit tests here. Uh, but you can see all the unit tests I have for this particular component here. Now, some are more you know, in depth than others, um, but the general theme for all of them uh, is basically the same. And there's this concept in uh, testing of uh, or AAA, it's a, it stands for Arrange, Act, Assert. And so first you arrange your test, you set up the testing uh, environment, uh, which involves you know, setting up this using testbed to create this um, testing environment. And then I move on to the, the act step, uh, which is doing something. So in this case, I'm setting uh, the title to be blank, and then I trigger the save notice function. So that's uh, it's getting our program into the state that we want to test. And then once I've done that, I move on to the final part of that AAA, uh, process, which is assert, which means you make an assertion as to what should have happened. Now we don't use uh, assert in uh, Jasmine particularly, which is the, the testing framework that I'm using here. Uh, but we have this expect statement, which is our assert. And it says we expect that the save notice function uh, in the notices provider should not have been called. Since we've set a blank title and we've attempted to save the notice, uh, that function should never get triggered because we don't want to allow that uh, notice to be saved if there is no title. And so with all of these unit tests in, in place for you know, this component in particular, I can be reasonably confident that you know, if all these unit tests are, uh, are passing and you know, I've designed the test reasonably well, I can be reasonably confident that this component is working. Now obviously it's no guarantee that it is working just because all your tests are passing. Uh, you may have neglected to test something or you may have written the testing correctly, uh, but it does uh, you know, provide more confidence that the code is working and it's going to allow you to pick up a lot of uh, bugs and errors that you may have otherwise missed. And you can see over in the um, uh, panel on the left here, I have my you know, unit testing file for the add notice component. Uh, but I've got one for every other component as well. I've got one here for the for the home page, for the login page, for the notices page here, uh, for both the, the providers that I'm using. And so I can test all of these things individually to make sure that each thing is doing its job properly. Now with unit testing, everything is tested in isolation. So I can ensure that, or at least I can be reasonably confident that my add notice page is working. I can be confident that my notices provider and my data provider are working as they should be. Uh, but unit tests don't provide, uh, unit tests don't 
guarantee that the system as a whole is working though. You could have individual units passing tests fine, but the uh, program as a whole could not work. And so the idea when you're unit testing is that you intentionally isolate things. If you have a unit test that relies, or if you're testing some functionality that relies on, say, the data provider, if my add notice page makes a request to the data provider, I shouldn't pull that data provider into that test. Whether or not the, the data provider is currently working should be irrelevant to me testing the add notice page. All I'm interested in is whether the add notice page works. But then in a, in a real environment where we are actually using the data provider in the add notice page, well, then that could fail because there could be some issue with that integration there. And so there are other tests we can run uh, outside of unit tests like end-to-end uh, -end tests that could help us identify problems uh, problems that our unit tests miss. Uh, but, uh, but by having our, our unit tests there, we can be sure, or again, not sure, but are reasonably confident that each individual component is doing what it should be. And, uh, and if something does go wrong, it's going to be very easy to identify where something is going wrong. The unit test is going to fail, and it's going to say, well, it failed for exactly this reason. This is what's happening, and you can go and fix that. Okay, so I hope this video was you know, coherent enough that it made some sense. Uh, I guess this is targeted at people who are new to uh, testing. I wanted to communicate um, the value of a unit test and what it looks like in a, in a real environment rather than you know, just a, I guess, a, a silly example or something like that. It is a, it's a huge topic. There's tons to cover. So I've, I've tried to, I guess, selectively um, get the main point across. Uh, so hopefully that's been useful. I'm going to do another video separately on end-to-end -end testing, which is a different type of testing uh, with the same sort of theme. We'll try and um, cover the, the basics, what it looks like, what it is, and why you might want to use it. Uh, so that video will probably be out soon. I uh, hope you enjoyed this one and I will see you in the next one.